Hello and welcome back to Shenzhen IO. Today we are working on Neat Based Printer, which is an interesting title. That's a hook. That is a hook. If you're clicking off this video after you hear that, you're a crazy person. Rula Lee says, The increase in extreme weather events across the globe has resulted in the need for innovations in food security. Recent advances in nutritional technology have allowed for a variety of meat-like products to be assembled out of a common substrate. A portable meat production station could be an effective solution in the recovery period after initial emergency supplies have been used. I have sourced some initial meat product designs that we can use to get started. Carl says, I'm not sure I put this up in my mouth no matter how dire the emergency. So, what are we doing? keypad is an input connected to a keypad. Okay, that makes sense. Extrude is an output. Zero, one, and two are outputs connected to valves in the meat extruder that control whether lean mix or fat mix is excluded. What? <clears throat> When a value is available from the keypad, read it and assemble the corresponding meat specification, which are found on a page in the supplemental data section of the manual. So it's a good dang thing I brought this up. Supplemental data is way down there. Target, we've done meat. <laughs> so, wow, okay, this is going to be interesting. So, bacon, we put the meat on top, and then two layers of bacon. Here we put a couple little packets of fat in the middle, and here we have to put them around the edges. This is going to be interesting. <clears throat> so, Okay, the, the big thing here is that we've got four different outputs, but I think, I think we'll be alright. So this is, it looks like this is blocking, so we're going to look for uh, Slex to start. We're going to put these two fellows right around here, and uh, we might actually have to stagger them a little bit, and let's put you to that, and then put you like this, okay, and then you can go there, well, no, let's, let's save ourselves the bridge you right to there. And then the keypad. Does it send to both out or no? It probably doesn't. Let's just see. Uh, Slex X1. Move X1 to data. That's it. That's all I want you to do. And I'm guessing only one of you is going to get that one. That one goes to you. Wait, what? Did I... Whoops. Did I fuck that up? I, I think I cut it instead of copying it. 
Alright, so the one goes to you, wakes you up, and then you're looking for that one that's there. Okay, that's fine. That's understandable. I'm not super concerned about that. We will just... Boop, boop, boop. Okay. <clears throat> so... Yeah, move that in. And then you are going to You know what? This might actually be easier if I just do four chips. I could probably do it on two, but I think I'll have an easier time if I do it with four. So let's let's do that instead. Let's do this completely differently. <laughs> We're just looking for the best setup here. So we want you doing that, okay? And then This to that, and boom. Right. So that's the setup. <clears throat> and this should be pretty easy. Like, like I said, I think we could have done it on two chips, but we will do it on three. So you're going to slex. Oh. Accumulator, and you are going to move 100 to P1, move accumulator to X1, sleep six, move zero to P1. That's your job. You, go to select so, move X to the accumulator, and then now you're going to um, <clears throat> test how the accumulator compares to two. If it's less than two, you are going to move four. Wait. Move that to the accumulator. And then I, I think I also want you to. 
move, move, move that on before you do anything else. And yeah, if it's less than one. Gen P one one. Do that four times. make this neater if I have to. Also, also jump sleep. So, yeah, I guess that I guess that actually could have stayed on a smaller chip. So let's cut that out. Let's bring this in. Cut that right there and change that to a one. All right, so those two should be working. Now these two are gonna be. You do something different for each one, so you definitely need to be a bigger chip. And I think they both need to be bigger chips. So let's go ahead and get that set up here. So put that right there. Put that right there. back a tile and then move you back a tile and now we are good you do that and we'll just make that connection nice and clean all right so you're gonna sleep XO you're gonna immediately move it into the accumulator you're gonna send it out to them and then you're gonna test how it compares to two if it is less than two You, Gen P1, 1 by 3, 4, 5, and then Gen P1, 1 by 1. Okay, if it is 3, then you're going to. A zero, and I guess uh, I guess we'll jump sleep here on both. 
both of these just to be on the safe side of life. Jump sleep. And if it is two, then you are going to. Sleep one, Gen P one, two by one, Gen P one, two by one. That should be it. Same thing here, except uh, you're not moving it out, you're saving it for yourself. Okay, and then how does it compare to two? If it is a one, then you need to go on a little cross eye here. The same thing this one's done, which is not cool, actually. This might end up taking too many steps. I might have to rewrite that. It's if, it's a, if it's a three, then you're doing a those and if it's a two then you jump to sleep so there you go that should do it whoops we're we're off by one on this thing uh, I guess uh, just miscounted there make that a sleep seven now we should be okay are so yeah that was pretty simple uh, like I said I could probably do it with uh, fewer chips but I wanted to make it easy on myself and I did um, I could save myself a line here that's uh, gen p170 and it works the same way so uh, let's do the walkthrough uh, we've already got this thing done so all the chips are asleep until they get instruction from the keypad to turn on. It's a one. This chip gets that first. It takes the one, puts it in the accumulator. It doesn't really care what it is. So it's like, wait. Yeah, it, this doesn't need to happen. Uh, yeah, get rid of that. that. That line does not need to happen. Okay, let's start that again. So it gets the one stores it. It could actually just push it straight through. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, move, uh... We're saving a lot of lines here. There you go. Okay. So now, alright, it takes the one. It pushes it straight through to the next chip, and then it's going to generate a pulse of seven time units and then turn off for zero time on units, basically. But this one, he's received this, he's putting it in there, all right. Meanwhile, this guy's gonna turn on. And all right, he's going to move that, he's gonna move that information forward so this guy can start thinking about it. So all right, he stores that in there. Meanwhile, this guy, uh, how does it compare to two? You can press one, two, or three on the keypad. So how does it compare to two? Uh, this one happens to be less than two. So what it's going to do, and yeah, I wrote this out just the worst way I could. Uh, since it's a one, it will generate a pulse for a time cycle, wait a time cycle with no pulse, and then do that again just four times. That really doesn't need to be there. And if I'm being super anal about this, that should be a zero. So, take your zero. You are going to see how it compares to two. It's actually less than two. 
So we're going to generate a pulse. Meanwhile, this guy is generating the pulse. And it's going to wait a cycle, turn it off, wait a cycle, and then do it again. It's just going to repeat that function because with the supplemental data we got, uh, line one, it's either going to be fat, no fat, fat, no fat, you know, it's going to be that cycle of on, off, on, off, on, off, or it's just going to be all off for these, for these two. So style one, it does this alternating, but style two and three, it doesn't do anything. So that's what it does. It, it tests, it, if it's less than two, and it could just, you know, I could change this to equal to one or whatever, but it doesn't matter. And it's gonna it's gonna generate this little whoop, up down up down up down, just telling valve zero, you know, put fat, put meat, put the fat, put meat, and just just alternate. Okay, that's what that thing does. If it's anything besides a one, it's gonna test and it's gonna skip all those zeros and just go back to sleep. I'm not gonna not gonna do a thing. Now the other chips are a little more complicated. So this one once wakes up, stores its one, sends it forward to this guy, wakes him up. He's gonna, uh, same thing really. Uh, this talk through, I could end this talk through right now. It's the same thing. Yeah, how does it compare to two? If it's less than two, then we're gonna put fat in once, sleep for five cycles, and then put fat in once more and sleep again. And again, this should probably be a zero on these. Just in case, like if they were to press the button right here, it wouldn't work because it would still be sleeping. So yeah, that's what he does. Generates it one, go to sleep for five, and then generate one more, and that's it. But if it is a three, for instance, then in that case, this chip right here, it's going to see that it's greater than 2, it's going to jump here, and it's just going to generate fat for 7 straight cycles, and that's it. If it's a 2, if it's equal to 2, it's going to jump all of the minuses and all the pluses. It's going to wait one cycle, generate fat twice, wait another cycle, generate fat twice, and again, wait another cycle. And I think that's one where he actually gets to wait another cycle. That's that, and then this chip works the same way as this one, except he has, if it's a one, he does the same pulse that this one does. If it's a three, he does the same pulse that this one does. And if it's a two, he does absolutely nothing. So, simple simple design. Uh, I made it easy on myself. We got it done, uh, I think, really fast. What was the time here? 23 minutes right now, so yeah, really fast completion on this one. Power usage is right in the norm. Product cost is a little high and lines are a little high. But yeah, I could trim it down, I think. Yeah, I wrote it I wrote it fast and simple. I could probably I could probably trim it down if I really wanted to, but I don't. I sampled some of the meats from this product and found them all quite delicious. Carl, you should really give it a try. I agree. It's surprisingly better than I expected. Make me a fish and chips robots, then we'll talk. And what do we got here? Remove stray carbon nanotubes and other kinds of nanotoxins from the body the natural way with herbal nanoparticle cleanse. Only from health solutions. Stray carbon nanotubes have been entering our atmosphere at an alarming rate and can remain in the body for decades. Our 100% natural herbal remedy is made from genuine California velvety grass, which has been shown to counteract the potential harmful effects of nanoparticles in the body and flush them out by enhancing the bottle's natural immune system. Order today and also get a free 8 ounce bottle of Wi Fi wash, a specially formulated all natural body wash that removes Wi Fi buildup on the surface of the skin. Herbal nanoparticle cleanse plus free Wi Fi wash at a $30 value. That's pretty sweet. 
And this is, uh, let me just check here really quick before we shut this down. That's the 25th puzzle. And I think there's 30, so I think this is actually it. I think this is the end of the game right here. So really, really cool. I'll see you, see you next time.